If you're looking for some basic tips and tricks on how to create metal textures in Photoshop, then you're in the right place. My name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Photoshop for over 10 years, and in this same Battle Task Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create these metal textures using Adobe Photoshop. Create a new document, select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width and the height to 850. Keep the rest of the settings as they come. You can press Ctrl and 0 to fit the canvas inside your screen. Then go to Window in the menu bar and make sure that the panels with this check mark are opened. Move to the Layers panel, hold down the Alt key and double click this layer to unlock it. Then select the Paint Bucket tool from your toolbar. Double click the foreground color and let's make it gray. Now you can click your selected layer to fill it with this color and then double click this layer as we need to add a beveled edge. So simply click this section to enable the bevel and emboss. Keep this inner bevel selected. For the technique you need to select sizzle hard. Increase the depth all the way to 1000%. Increase the size to about 57. Keep this angle. Let's change the blending mode for the highlight mode to normal and increase the opacity to about 76%. And for the shadow mode, let's keep this setting. Head back to the layers panel and add a second layer for your design using this button. Keep it selected, switch to the gradient tool and we'll need a black to white gradient. So simply press the D hotkey to replace these default colors. Simply click and drag to add a black to white linear gradient like this. And now you need this photo from Envato Elements to get some of those gold colors. So make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. That's millions of creative assets, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now using the link in the description. Add it to your design. Move to the swatches panel and add a new color group using this button. Name it gold. And now you can switch to the eyedropper tool and use it to pick the colors that you need and save them inside this color group. All you need is a simple click. So click this section to pick the color and then click this plus button to add the color inside your color group. Continue with this color and again save it inside your group. Next you'll need this color, this one, also this one, and finally this lighter tone. Once you're done, remove this photo from your design and let's add a gradient map. Click this gradient bar as we need to adjust this gradient. And let's start with these two gradient sliders. Select the left one and make sure that your last color from the group is applied. And then select the right one and apply this darker color. Now using simple clicks, let's add another eight gradient sliders. When you're done, select this first gradient slider. First of all, set the location to 5% and then apply this color. Continue with the next gradient slider. Set the location to 25% and apply your second color from the group. For the next slider, you need to apply the first color from your group and move it to 31%. Continue with the next one and apply the fifth color and then set the location to about 39%. Next, you'll need again the first color and set the location to 55%. Continue with the next one. Move it to 62% and apply the final color from your group. For this one, you need to apply the second color from your group and set the location to 69. And finally, for this one, you need to apply the third color from your group and move it to 90%. Now you can press enter to apply the gradient and this will be your gold texture. Let's continue with the steel texture. Again, create a new document and set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Move to the Layers panel to add a new layer. 
Select the gradient tool from your toolbar and make sure that the foreground color is set to black and the background color is set to white. And now you can easily fill your selected layer with a black to white gradient from the left side to the right side of the canvas. Keep this layer selected and let's go to filter, noise and add noise. Set the amount to 44%. Check these two boxes and click OK to apply this filter. Continue and go again to filter, but this time select blur and motion blur. You need to set the angle to 20 degrees and the distance to 50 pixels. Click OK to apply this second filter. And this will be your plain steel texture. Now using this steel texture, let's apply a diamond plate pattern inspired by this photo from Envato Elements. So let's create a new document. This time you need to increase the width and the height to 900 pixels. Then go to view and show grid, which will enable the grid. Go again to view and make sure that the snap to grid is enabled. And then go to edit, preferences, guides, grid and slices. All you have to do is enter 50 in this grid line every box. Keep the subdivision set to 1 and click OK to make sure that you'll have a grid line every 50 pixels. To create the starting shape from our diamond plate effect, select the pen tool from your toolbar. Remember to select shape from this drop down menu and now you can start creating your shape from the bottom left corner of the canvas. Just click once, then move 650 pixels to the right, so 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 650, and also 350 pixels up. Now you can click and drag these handles like this. As you can see, the snap to grid makes our life easier. Continue with the third point and add it in the top right corner of the canvas. Next, you need to move 600 pixels to the left and 300 pixels down. Click and drag these handles exactly like this. And finally, remember to close your path with a simple click on this starting point. Let's remove the stroke color. Make sure that the fill is set to black. Then press Ctrl and T, which will allow you to lower the size of this shape. Just right click this box and select pixels and then lower it to 200 pixels. You need to also rasterize this shape, so right click it and go to Rasterize Layer. Now press Ctrl and R to enable the rulers and simply click and drag to add two guides which will divide your canvas into four equal parts. Continue with the Rectangular Marquee Tool. Start by creating a selection across this area. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to paste this part of your shape. Using the Move Tool, let's place it in this exact position. Reselect your main diamond shape. This time load the selection across this area. Again copy it and paste it. Move it in the bottom left corner of your canvas. Reselect the rectangular marquee tool and this time load the selection across this area. Make sure that you have this original shape selected. Press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Move this new shape in this position. And finally reselect your main shape. Use again the rectangular marquee tool, load a selection across this area, copy it, paste it, and move it in the top left corner of the canvas. When you're done, reselect this main diamond shape, press Ctrl T and rotate it 90 degrees to the left, press Enter, let's disable this white layer, and now we need to save this design as a pattern. All you have to do is go to Edit, and define pattern, name your pattern, and click OK. Now that you got your pattern, let's return to the original steel texture design, add a new layer, use the pen bucket tool to fill this layer with a random color, double click it, lower the fill opacity all the way to 0% and enable the pattern overlay. In this drop down menu, you will find your pattern, apply it. Lower the scale to about 70%. Click OK. Let's rasterize this layer. Again, double click it. And start by enabling the bevel and emboss. 
just increase the size to 103, set the angle to 72 and 16, keep the rest of the settings as they are, and enable the drop shadow. Here you need to change the blending mode to multiply, make sure that the color is set to black, increase the opacity to about 49%, Set the angle to 65 degrees, lower the distance to only 4, increase the spread to 29, and for the size again enter 4. Click OK, and this will be your diamond plate texture. Finally, let's see how you can create a Mercury texture inspired by this photo. Let's create a new document, set the width to 850 and the height to 1200. Click this button, select the pen tool from your toolbar and use it to create a shape which should look somewhat like this. Once you're happy with the look of your shape, you can double click it and make sure that this is the fill color. And then again, double click it to open the layer style window and for the beginning, let's enable the bevel and emboss. Keep this inner bevel. For the technique, let's select smooth. Lower the depth to 145, lower the size to 85, and increase the soften to 15. For the angle, let's enter 55 and 50 degrees. Change the highlight mode, blending mode to screen. And don't forget to lower the opacity to 70%. For the shadow mode, let's change the blending mode to soft light and lower the opacity all the way to 10%. Next, you need to enable the inner glow. Keep the blending mode set to screen and increase the opacity to 36%. For the choke, let's enter 26 and 14 for the size. Lower the range to 49 and continue with the satin. Make sure that the blending mode is set to multiply and the color to black. Lower the opacity to 45% and set the angle to 50 degrees. And then set these two values to 43 and 31. Don't forget to also select this contour. And when you're done, enable the gradient overlay. Set the blending mode to multiply, keep the opacity at 100%. Lower the scale to 95% and set the angle to 45 degrees. And then you can click this gradient bar to adjust your gradient. Double click this gradient color and make sure that you enter this color. Add the same color for this other gradient slider. And remember to lower the opacity of this gradient slider to 0%. When you're done, you can click OK and OK. Press Ctrl and J, which will duplicate this shape. Right click your copy and let's remove the current layer style by selecting clear layer style. And then double click again your copy, lower the fill opacity to 0% and enable the bevel and emboss. Let's bring the depth back to 1000%, lower the size to 35 and increase the soften to 16 pixels. Keep this angle. Change the blending mode to color dodge and lower the opacity to 45 degrees. And for the shadow mode, let's bring it to 0%, which will make it invisible. Now you can click OK to apply this layer style. Continue and add a new layer. Keep it selected. Hold down the control key and click this shape, which will load a selection around it. Select the brush tool from your toolbar. You can right click on your canvas and increase the size of your brush to 200 pixels. Make sure that the hardness is set to 0%. Also make sure that the foreground color is set to white. And then using a simple brush stroke, let's add some highlights on the left and right edge of your shape, somewhat like this. When you're done, remember to change the blending mode of this layer to overlay and also lower the opacity to 70%. Press Ctrl and D to get rid of this selection. Let's add one more layer. Make sure that the brush tool is still active and lower the size to 10 pixels. You can use the zoom tool to zoom in on this area. And using the brush tool, let's add some small dots. Let's 
let's zoom out using Ctrl N0 and add one more dot in this position. And when you're happy with the look of these tiny highlights, remember to change the blending mode of this final layer to soft light. This will be your mercury texture. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it lets me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.